All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about Nautabot. So Nautabot is a website that you can use to manage virtually any asset in your IT environment. And Nautabot is known as what's called a source of truth. So what that is, is an application where you create a model of your network. And then the goal is to have your actual physical network mirror what's in your source of truth and not the other way around. So initially, if you set up a source of truth, you will have to make make it mirror what's out there in your actual network. But after that, you should really be making changes in your source of truth and then making sure that the physical network then mirrors that and not vice versa. Uh, Nautabot is an open source project that was actually forked from a different project called Netbox. Um, they look virtually the same, but when Nautabot came out, they just added some additional features. And Nautabot is based on the Jenga web framework. So what that is, is it's a web framework that's written in Python. So using Django, you can create a website using Python classes and functions. And so it's really great if you're a Python developer because it has a really easy, it, it gives you a really easy transition into some basic web development. Um, and so I'll kind of run through the main tabs in Nautabot. I mean, when you first go to it, you're gonna see a main dashboard here. Um, but really all the different functionality is separated into tabs up at the top in the nav bar. And also just FYI, I've, I've gone to the demo Nautabot server in my browser. So that's just demo.nautabot.com and anyone can access this on the internet. Um, but anyways, so to start off, if we hit organization, the first thing we see is sites and regions. Uh, and so one important concept with Jenga websites is that every Every one of these things that we're gonna see is an object in the database. So um, every site is an object, every region is an object in the database, and all of these objects have relationships. So um, for example, each region may have multiple sites, but each site should only have one region because this is our that's the physical layout of all of our sites, right? So um, that would be a one-to-many relationship, for example. And then you can see you can make everything from racks, and then you can group the racks. Um, and then moving on to tenancy. So tenants are, you can kind of think of them as like child organizations, so to speak. So let's say, for example, that you are an ISP and you have a lot of T1 lines that you lease out to customers. Um, if you had three customers that were leasing your lines, you could create tenants correlating to each one of those organizations. And then Furthermore, if you wanted to, you could group them in tenant groups. And then tags are pretty important. Tags are generic, they're just generic tags that you can actually apply to most of the other objects in the database. So we can tag tenants, we can tag sites, devices, so on and so forth. Um, and then tags are whatever you want them to be. So um, whatever you wanna tag something with, you can, you can do it. And then moving on to devices, you can make everything from devices, you can give them roles, you can give them a platform, you can create device manufacturers, and then each manufacturer can have multiple device types. So another one to many relationship there. Uh, so for example, you could have a manufacturer called Cisco, and then underneath device types, you know, you could have any number of Cisco devices or device types. And you can see you can even create cables and console, console connections. Um, in individual interfaces and front ports, you know, whatever you want. And so you can see, you can really map out a detailed picture of the physical network, or at least what it should look like. And then moving on to IPAM. So one big feature is that Nautabot supports the, um, it supports IP address management. And so at the root level, you've got um, registries, and then you can create aggregates of IP addresses. And then you can break those down into prefixes. You can assign them roles. And then those prefixes are broken down into individual IP addresses, which you can then apply to devices. And then virtualization. So you can manage virtual machines and then cluster the virtual machines. You can manage circuits. And then moving on to jobs. So jobs are actually Python scripts that you can write in Nautabot, but these scripts are given access to the database. So you can do any number of things in one of these jobs, but for example, you could run some sort of validation. So you could check to see whether or not every device in your database has uh, certain things or meets certain criteria, for example. 
And then moving on to extensibility, um, we have webhooks. So if you don't know what a webhook is, uh, a webhook is essentially some sort of action that you execute when an event occurs. So in Nautabot, what we can do is we can say, uh, we could create a webhook that says when a device object is deleted, then execute some sort of action. Or we could say when a device is edited or updated, execute some sort of action. So that's what a webhook is. Then we have config context. Um, config contexts are just generic structures of data written in uh, YAML or JSON. And so I, I went to config context and I hit NXOS. So they've already created some config contexts in the demo server. And once you hit one, you can actually go down to the data pane and see the JSON data in that config context. And you can toggle between YAML or JSON. And then up here on the right in the assignment pane, you can see what objects or, or devices they've applied this config context to. So what they're saying here is that any device with the Cisco NXOS platform will inherit this data. And this data is present, uh, sorry, that data is attached to those devices in the database. So that's what a config context is. And then we have GraphQL. So GraphQL is a method of querying the database. And if we're in Nautobot, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can hit this GraphQL link at the, and it'll actually take you to an integrated GraphQL terminal. So just to kind of give you an idea of what this can do, um, we start a query with the opening curly brace, then hit enter, and the IDE will automatically indent for you two spaces. And then you can select what object you want to pull information for. So let's say we want to pull information for, for devices, so we just say devices, and then devices have subfields. So each device has attributes. And we can't just say devices. We actually have to say what subfields we want to uh, to pull. So if we want to drill into devices, we do another opening curly brace, then hit enter. And now we've indented one more level. And now we can select subfields of each device. And so for a really basic query, let's say we just wanted the name of every device. We can just say name. And now you can see the red squigglers are gone. Now if we hit play, you can see that we get some JSON formatted, formatted data. And uh, you can see it has a data key. And then that's a dictionary with the devices key, which is a list of device objects represented by dictionaries. And then inside each dictionary, we just have the name field, which is what we selected. So that's kind of how GraphQL works. And we could execute this query with an API call. So using an API call, we could send this to Nautobot. And this is what it would return. So that's GraphQL. And then uh, the last feature underneath extensibility is uh, Git repositories. So all of these things that we're talking about can actually be stored in an external Git repository. And so you just link to it in Nautobot, and then you can pull all of those files, which is really nice. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is plugins. So plugins, uh, I, so earlier I talked about how I can't remember if I talked about it or not, but Django websites are typically separated into particular applications. And each application within the main website is just responsible for managing certain assets. So in Nautabot, there's an app that's sole purpose is to manage IP addresses. There's another one that's just for virtualization and then another one for you know devices, so on and so forth. What plugins are, are external applications that you can even write yourself and then add to Nautabot. So if you want to create a web application with some additional functionality, you can do that. You can write it in Django, and then you can add it to Nautabot. So that's a really flexible feature. And so that's what plugins are. Uh, but again, so Nautabot is just a source of truth application. So you create your network in Nautabot, and then your actual network should mirror what's in Nautabot and not vice versa. Uh, the main feature is the IPM solution, but again, you can use it to manage any virtually any asset in your IT infrastructure. And then uh, you'd use jobs to basically execute Python scripts that have access to the data, to the database. So that's, so that's really flexible. Um, but that, that's all I've got for Nautabot. So I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a good one.